Hey, Jungle Explorer here, and today I'm going to be demonstrating the best sight night vision conversion system for rifle scopes with recording. Okay, guys, I already did an unboxing and intro for this particular product uh, before, and I will throw a link up in the top right hand corner of the video right now uh, on YouTube for you to go to that video and see the unboxing if you're interested in what comes in this box. But this video is about showing you what the actual equipment does and real life, real world testing and how it performed. So this is the review portion of it and I'm gonna be giving you videos and pictures and examples and kind of giving you uh, some personal opinions and uh, of what I felt about it in the testing on this, okay guys? So let's go right into that part of the video. All right, so um, I took this out in the field and did a bunch of testing with it and you know, um, it, it's basic. It's a basic, simple design here. Uh, let me run across a few basic things with you. I mean, obviously, it's intended to connect to a rifle scope. That's the only way you use it. Uh, it converts a rifle scope into uh, a night vision system, but it's actually more than a night vision system. You can record in the daytime as well. Um, essentially, there's a camera down inside here, and this system aligns with the scope, and it shoots video and pictures through the scope itself. Um, it has an infrared emitter flashlight right here to boost the nighttime sensitivity. Without this, it basically cannot film at night. So it's not a true night vision um, conversion system in the sense that it can actually sense light at night without, without any light whatsoever. It has to have this infrared flashlight in order to work, okay? Now, it has a daytime and nighttime um, function. I've seen some reviews online where people say it doesn't work, and I think what they're doing is they're forgetting to switch this thing. If this is over to the uh, left, it's in daytime mode where you'll have full color and you can do color video. If you switch it to the right, it's in nighttime mode, and then you're just going to have black and white video. Um, if it's in daytime mode, you can see at night with it, but only about 30, 40 yards, even with the flashlight. Once you switch it to night mode, it will be able to see several hundred yards, okay? Um, quite good, actually, compared to a night vision scope. I've had a few actual night vision scopes, and I've never been really impressed with them because, uh, I mean, even the stuff that were in the $2,000 range seemed to really kind of peter out around 60, 70 yards. Uh, they just weren't what I... I just really didn't like them at all. Um, you know, but this system right here takes a normal rifle scope converts it to something that you can use at night with assistance from an infrared flashlight, okay? Um, now, let me go ahead and after we've, since we've covered all that, let's jump right into the images. All right, so um, I'm gonna first gonna do some daytime stuff. So I'm gonna show you a picture of my deer feeder, which is at 150 yards in the daytime, okay? And now here's another picture of a oil field pump jack, which is at 260 yards. Okay, you can see that the pictures are way overexposed. That's just because of the sensitivity of the camera, but still not that bad. Here's a little video of that same scenario. Okay, so you can shoot pictures and video in the daytime with this thing. It's not the best, you know, they're not super high quality, but hey, if there was a deer or a pig or something that you could see it, it actually does better at night. Um, it doesn't have that overexposure. So let's do a picture of the, that, that same deer feeder at night. Okay, that's 150 yards using this right here. That's a pretty good picture, believe me, buddy. Not many night vision systems can get that bright and that clear at night. I don't care what you spend. Okay, now here's one at 260 yards, the uh, pump jack. That's at night. That's, that's not bad at all, guys. I mean, seriously, that's a long way to see in the dark. Okay, now... Um, I really, really wanted to get live animal footage and man, it was really hard, but, uh, I fortunately finally got some footage of a coyote. This is at 3:20 in the morning guys. I stayed up. So yeah, I ho hope you appreciate it. Stayed up all, all night trying to get some good footage. And here's a coyote, uh, in the middle of the night. Okay, so there you go, man. That was some really good, you know, uh, footage of that coyote there. And just capture that at night. I, I was very impressed with the system, okay? I was, it, did, it did impress me that I was able to do that. 
and capture. And is it National Geographic quality? Absolutely not. Um, you don't even want to know what it would cost to take really good quality nighttime video. I actually moved this to a much higher quality scope, um, a Bushnell Ultra HD Legend scope, which is about a $400 scope. Um, they don't even make them anymore really clear optics and so the images and the samples that i'm going to show you come from from being attached to that scope not to this scope um but i had a problem with that and let me talk about that so um the the scope that i used it on for that i'm going to show you the samples of it doesn't didn't have an a, an adjustable objective like this one depending on how far something away you can fine tune the focus of the scope and get it really in focus um, the other one didn't have that, and that kind of resulted in a problem uh, that when I used the zoom function, see, if I, if I kept it in 4 power, it did really good, but if I zoomed it out to 12 power, such as like right there, um, I could focus the image. Use, there's a little focus wheel right down inside here, and you can use that to focus the image, but when I focused it at a long range, uh, the crosshairs went blurry, and you'll see that in the samples. Um, that the crosshairs when I was shooting the really long distance the image is clear but the crosshairs crosshairs are blurry that's because uh, uh, the scope I was using it on did not have this adjustable objective scope uh, right here that I could actually fine tune it so I had to use this to focus the image and when I did it caused the crosshairs to go blurry on it um, so I recommend that if you do use this you use it with a scope that has an adjustable objective like this. That way you can fine tune it here and not here. So it is not a drop dead simple thing to use guys. All right, it does take a little bit of effort, but it is actually accomplishing something that is kind of unique, okay? So let me put it this way. Um, you know, I shoot photography too, and I have a uh, 400 millimeter lens for my camera, which I shoot pictures of birds and stuff with at a long range, um, the lens costs a thousand dollars, okay? Shooting things high quality at a long distance in photography, you know, if you're watching Discovery Channel, National Geographic, those people are using $20,000 lenses to get that kind of quality, okay? Scopes do not have that kind of quality. The glass in scopes is not designed for photography or videography. They're designed for hunting. So basically, you know, they're going to get the job done because all you really need to do is see the whatever you're shooting at um, good enough to know where the crosshairs are. You don't really need a National Geographic quality. And the way scopes are built are not intended to capture video through. So the reason I'm telling you this is because um, this is not going to make better video than what the quality of the image coming through the scope. There's an old saying, garbage in, garbage out. Um, this is a $99 scope, so the glass might as well be made out of the bottom of Coke bottles. It's not that good quality, and there's even cheaper scopes out there with horrible glass. Believe me, I have seen some scopes with absolute horrid glass, okay? Um, but even if you bump your dollars up to four or $500 scope, remember, it's a scope, and four or $500 for good quality glass is scraping the bottom of the barrel, I mean, there are a good quality picture lens for a, a DSLR professional camera easily runs two to three thousand dollars. Okay, um, even your more mid mid range ones are over a thousand dollars. So even a four or five hundred dollar scope, it doesn't have great quality glass. Plus, it's not designed to take pictures through. And the reason I'm I'm saying all this stuff is because I've seen a lot of comments where people complain about this not having a good image. And it's not really the device itself. Now, I am not saying this is a super high quality video recording device and the scope is just giving it bad images. I'm saying that you're not going to get, I don't care what you put behind here, you're only gonna get as good as what comes through the scope. Okay, guys? Okay, so um, I've gone through some of the weaknesses and stuff with it, but you know, let me just basically say right here, Honestly, I do like this for a video recording system for long range, you know, at night because I don't really have anything else that could do that. But at the same time, I personally, I'm kind of not comfortable with it on the gun in a hunting scenario. 
It just feels abnormal to me. Unless you're sitting in a stand or you're sitting with, you know, it on some kind of a tripod, it's very difficult to hold a gun down here and try to aim with it. It's just guns aren't designed to be held that way. Um, I'm going to use it for shooting wildlife footage at night for some of my videos in the future, but that's, that's just me. The cool thing about this is that in order to change this, like if you buy a night vision scope and you put it on a gun, okay, so a night vision scope is very, very expensive, all right, um, any kind of quality ones. I mean, we're talking $600 starting range. And you, if you put it on a gun, then you have to sight it in with that gun, okay? And then if you want to move it to another rifle, you have to change it out, resight it in. You can't just move it. The great thing about this system right here is that all you have to have on your existing rifle is this little scope ring upside down here. And you literally can't... Let me go ahead and turn this off here real quick, okay? Uh, all you got to do to switch this out is undo a few screws right here on the side. Okay. Pull this off. Loosen this screw right here. Pull that off. And then undo this right here. Okay. Pull that flashlight out. Pull that off. Now... You could actually just reattach this to another gun. So probably less than a minute to change this from one gun to the next. And since the it doesn't alter the scope, if the scope's already sighted in, then you're ready to go by just changing the system. All you've got to have is this upside down ring on each gun that you want to use it on. And you literally can just change it around. And so you have one system that can go on all your your sighted in rifles and you don't need to re-sight it in and so the functionality of it the utility of it makes it a great low cost option for um you know nighttime capability it's not the best most easiest thing to use it does require a little bit of tongue holding to get the focus right and stuff like that but hey it does do a pretty amazing job for what it is and for what it costs um like I said, personally, it's very unless I was sitting in the stand, I wouldn't use it for nighttime hunting. It's almost impossible for me to hunt with it uh, by holding the gun. But other than that, that's that's just one of the drawbacks, you know. So that's what I think about it, guys. I've shown you the footage. I've shown you the samples. I've given you my opinion. It's up to you to decide whether this is something that might be useful for you. I will throw a link to this product in the description of the video. Uh, if you Just look down there and you'll see that there. Also, if you have any questions about this that I can answer, uh, please make a comment. Ask me those questions. I do my best to answer questions as quickly as possible when I get them. I travel a lot and I'm on the road, so I'm not always able to sit down and write down a, a thorough answer. But if I get a chance and it's a question I can't answer, I will get back to you eventually. Okay, guys? Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please like, subscribe, and comment. Until next time, this is the Jungle Explorer signing out.